long day of providing diabetes education to patients with uncontrolled type 2 diabetes. As a registered, registered dietitian, I often sit back and dream of a diabetes utopia. So not a perfect place where all of my patients can eat as many french fries or cupcakes as their hearts desire. But a perfect world where everyone who has type 2 diabetes gets the proper individualized education and support that they need. Now I know there are a lot of barriers to this. I won't even get into insurance coverage or the price of diabetes medication because we'll only have three minutes here today. But many times I'm faced with educating patients who have had type 2 diabetes for many years with no education or they come to visit me when complications arise. Unfortunately, Diabetes self-management education and support is severely underutilized. The CDC found that among newly diagnosed adults who were privately insured, only 6.8% of them actually received diabetes education within their first year of diagnosis. So we wanted to evaluate the efficacy of having a registered dietitian right there inside of the primary care physician's office. So as a registered dietitian, we provide education and we help patients to further understand how to manage their diabetes. We do this through making lifestyle changes. So we actually help them through meal planning, promoting healthy weight loss, weight goals, blood sugar monitoring, managing those goals, and actually helping them to maintain medication adherence if they're prescribed. So we had our 40 patients inside of this primary care family practice and then we decided to take their hemoglobin A1C levels before and then three months after this education. The hemoglobin A1C level is actually the average blood sugar control for the past three months. Now, the hemoglobin A1C level is a secret revealer. So if you had your good carbohydrate control, you took your medication, then great. But if you ate your donuts and ice cream every night while watching your favorite nighttime talk show, that'll show up too. So once we did this, we evaluated that after three months of having that education, our patients started out with an average of 7.1 hemoglobin A1C. After those three months, we actually found they had an average A1C of 6.8, which actually shows us good control. The American Diabetes Association recommends that we have type 2 diabetes patients to maintain an A1C of less than 7. So this was great to see that A1C of 6.8 among our patients. So hopefully, with studies like this and many more, my diabetes utopia that I dream about can one day come true. Thank you.